make it sound like Samagamani Dani Padani Sa. Already we're at, we're at a level of magic. I'm surprised if it's okay to be surprised. And I wonder why you're making me wonder. And when you sigh, it's louder. Hey, then anytime you try to sound off, oh, you know we really seem to get along. You know we really seem to get along It's louder, it's getting louder Hi guys, I'm Matthew And I'm Daniel This is The Playroom Studio, I'm a guitar teacher And I'm a vocal coach But today, like in many areas of life, we are students again <laughs> If you want to learn from us about the things that we know, go to our website There's some details there and you can shoot us a question What are we looking at? So today we are learning how to sing gamakas. So it's going to be explained to us. Um, I don't know if by the end of this video we will know how to do gamakas, but we'll at least know um, what we need to practice in order to achieve them one day. Um, <laughs> and this is something I've heard quite a few times in the comments when we've been uh, watching and reacting to um, Indian videos. Yeah. Some people in the comments want us to know a little bit more about what it is we're seeing, which is fair enough because we watch a lot of the videos and it'd be good to have a bit more of a, a vocabulary for what it is we're watching. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's, it's similar in a way to other, other things like dance. If you are a trained ballet dancer and that's what you do and, and you kind of join a tap class for the first time, you do yet again need to start from some sort of beginning. Mm. Um, so. It'd be, I'm quite excited to see what this is about and just see it explained and in, in a kind of secretly inside want to see if, the, if it's possible that I can actually do some of this stuff. Mm. I don't um, think we'll crack it in this five minute video but... I think I will. Oh, okay. 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 <laughs> this is the backbone of Indian classical music. In fact it is Gamakas that differentiates our music from the rest of the world. So let's learn a little more about this beautiful concept. What is a gamaka? A gamaka is basically a connector between two notes. So instead of singing notes in a plain manner like We add some curves and slides and make it sound like Already we're at, we're at a level of magic that I'm not sure. <laughs> I, I'd have to I'd have to f first learn that what that was because mm. I that's kind of similar and I've seen it said below to a do re mi fa so la yeah, yeah. but it's it's obviously I'd have to learn what what they was even what they were saying. Okay, cool. Let's go back slightly. <laughs> <laughs> There's like that movement in there, isn't there, that she can do so easily. And when we do that, it adds a lot more life to the notes and brings out agree. the essence of the raga. So what are the types of gamakas that you can find? Come on now. Well, Carnatic music recognizes 15 different types of gamakas. It's interesting how there's such defined r rules, isn't yeah. it, to this type, this style of singing. In regards to like other other ways of singing, obviously there are there are things and, and techniques and things that people follow, yeah. and that I would myself teach and and explain to people. But it's quite interesting when you have something that has such defined confines. Yeah, like these are the fifteen ways. This is what you do with this situation. Like, but today we're going to look at the four most common types that you can easily recognize when you listen to a song. Four's easier than 15. The first type is the sliding gamaka, where you simply slide from one note to another. <coughs> so instead of singing it plainly like <coughs> Sama, Sama, we slide between the notes like Sama, Sama, 
was that slide? Sama. Sama. Yeah. So you start the word on the same note. Sama. Sama. I'll take a descending example instead of. I'll learn the sitar instead. Sanipa. Sanipa. You sing. Sanipa. Sanipa. I didn't hear the difference between the sun and me. Mm. Will you sing? Sani. Sani. Like a. This is like this, like boom, boom, boom. It is. It's a lot to think about, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and again, I'm conscious she's not using her falsetto. It would be like that. Sa, 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 ni, sa, ni, ba. Yeah. So. Now this slide is called Jaru in Carnatic. Jaru. But Jaru, you can find Jaru. these slides even very prominently in light music as well. For example, Kannalani. That was a slide. Sometimes an entire line will be full of slides. Like, Tendral Vandhati Numbo That's wow. why when we're listening to so many of these performances, that when they're singing, I'm, I can feel the rhythm before anything comes mm -hmm. in. It's like they're sort of setting up the do what's going to happen. And it's, it's, it is, there is crossover, obviously, because we're using our voices, so there's going to be crossover, we're singing. And, and you do create movement when you sing, like, yeah. and, and you do create these sorts of waves in the vocal. Yeah. Um, but they're not as kind of intricate as... as in most yeah. cases, they're not... I mean, I can't think of a modern example, uh, or should I say, I can't think of a contemporary music example of using slides as much as is, as is used in the using the gamaka. So yeah. It doesn't happen. Yeah, I would agree. Did you see how every syllable was sliding to the next? There were no straight notes at all. So you really need to master this art of sliding from one note to another. Mm. The second type of gamaka is in the form of a wave or oscillation. So we take a note and keep oscillating back and forth. Let's take Raga Shankara Bharanam for example. Just for example. Now if we try to sing the notes without any gamakas, it would sound like Sari Gama Padani Sa. Now even though we sang the notes of Raga Shankara Bharanam, it did not bring out the essence of the Raga, right? It sounded more like the Western major scale. Yeah, it did. So in order to bring out the essence, we're going to add some wavy gamakas between the notes. Sari Gama Sari Ri There's a And a Gama And that's when it's done Ma Ma Sari Gama Ma Ma There is that kind of like I mean I believe that's doing it Ha That oscillation back and forth mm. It's not as clean as it could be Adani my issue would be it's too high for to do in the chest and I'd want to do that in the full voice. Mm. Only now it sounded like... And also it's hard. Raga Shankara Bharana. And this wavy gamaka technique is called Kampitam in Karnataka. Kampitam. So we, we've learned Jaru and now we've gone Kampitam. 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 The third type of gamaka is based on Janta Swaras or double notes. So whenever it's you like see the hits. same swara coming twice, like Sa Sa Here the second swara will always get an extra push or a force from below. Uh, so, so when we sing it's kind of like it's like a double bounce on a trampoline. Yeah. It's the second one's bigger. All that sort of stuff. Mm. Really, really cool. So you can see already just from this is the third one that all the different kind of techniques and textures yeah. that you're adding in to just the most simple of lines to create this really, really amazing picture. And that's why it's even more impressive sometimes when you take things apart and knowing how they're being done. Yeah. Because you can almost assume that it's, it's a lot easier than it is. Maybe we're going to need to have these uh, like notes of all the different techniques so we can pick them out next time we're watching something. So when we sing... Sa sa ri ri ga ga ma ma. 
Notice how every second swara we gave an extra force from a lower note, and that is the type of gamaka. Take the song for example. Ninnu kori varnam. Oh, it's just so. And finally, the last type of gamaka for Number today, four. which done I call it. the vibration gamaka, also known as spuritam in Carnatic music. Spuritam. That's spuritam. Cool. A spuritam no. is also based on the concept of janta swaras. Where the first swara is plain and the second swara gets an extra push, but in case of spuritam, the notes move so fast that it just sounds like a quick vibration. Mm. For example, kanna muchi enaida. Did you notice those two <clears throat> spuritams in that line? I did. You will find this very commonly across songs, and you might need some classical training to get it right. Okay. Usually, a song will have a combination of all these types of gamakas. So the next time you listen to your favorite song, try to break down each and every syllable of oh, the song will. and observe how does one syllable move to the next one. Is it through a sliding gamaka, or is it through a wave, or a spurita, and so on. So on that note, I'm going to leave you to explore the beautiful world of gamakas. For more such videos, download Vox. Great video for a start. Really good video. Well really well um, explained. Okay, so we have Jaru, Jaru, Kampitam, mm -hmm. Janta Suarez, and we have Spuritam. Spuritam? Spuritam. So the first one was, it was quite similar to it, like what we would call a glissando, a slide into something, but yeah. there was this kind of. They use that in a way, not just up into notes, but then down and then up and down. That's and down. also true of um, instrumentally what they do when they're playing things like, um, for example, the sitar. Maybe that's the most obvious one. But, um, but they saw that like things are sliding rather than there is a little bit of that, the changing of the, the abrupt changing of notes. But it's a lot of the sliding up and down as well. Absolutely. And uh, that does add interest when you're doing this kind of... It adds this level of fluidity to certain the way that certain things feel, and then you have the second one, which we decided was what campitam, campitam. What was campitam? The wavy gamaka they said. So as they're doing more up and down, up and down, up and down from note from word yeah. to word, um, and yeah, as the oscillating. As we said almost. before, I mean the most similar to uh, the thing that I would I do hear that in Western music. I do hear this sort of like. <laughs> all this sort of like back and forth, back and forth yeah, yeah. on certain mo moments because it does create this kind of rise and fall, rise yeah. and fall, rise and fall. And I suppose but the difference is that their this <clears throat> type of style of singing is more like a smooth waving, whereas the other one is like when you're doing riffs, you're sort of bouncing sort of yeah, and you down do the notes. and you break the note, you break it up. Yeah, um, um, and then we have Janta, Janta Suarez. Suarez, which is the. Uh, and having yeah. that sort of like second bounce on the note. So that was really, really quite interesting because again, we don't use that in the same way as, as they do at all. So all these things now we can kind of listen to songs yeah. and pick out and say, all right, that's what they're, they're exercising on that part. Well, of the that's song. what we'll try to do in the future. We'll try and use this, this knowledge. Absolutely. And then the last one, which was Spuritam, Spuritam, which is those um, vibrations, which interestingly enough, she didn't even really um, attempt to tell us about. She just said, maybe you need to go and uh, get some classical training. Too hot to handle on this video, basically. Okay, really, really interesting and really, really beautiful to listen to. So thanks for suggesting to us to do this. It was, it's, been, it's been great. Uh, and yeah, look forward to more videos in the future using our, our, our background knowledge now. Absolutely. All right. Thank you guys for watching this video. We hope that you enjoyed watching us um, learn just a little bit more about um, Indian style singing and um, we will see you again soon. Cheers. Thank you very much. Thank you.